Hi guys, Nito from Conditioning, and I've got breaking news. Meta have officially introduced a new coding round. It's an AI-enabled coding round, and it's 60 minutes. I started noticing people asking about this on our Discord about in the past two weeks. There have always been rumors about this, but they've definitely officially rolled it out. I know candidates who've had this, who have who've done this round, who have this round scheduled. So what I've done is I've spoken to a lot of people on the Discord, on other forums and got information about what to expect. Essentially, you have a new AI assist window. They still use Codepad, and we're going to talk about this in this video. It looks something like this. You're going to have the AI assist window on the right side, your code in the middle, and a sidebar with multiple files, but most likely multiple files representing a mini code base on the left side. So let's have a preview of today's video. We're going to talk about the key changes, the AI models you have access to, the question format, what the interviews are looking for, how to prepare, and we're gonna go through some FAQs. So let's dive in. So previously in Meta on-site, you typically have two lead code style coding rounds. And the idea was you had a 45 minute round but you had two questions to solve in 35 minutes. Now you're gonna, the AI enabled coding round replaces one of those lead code rounds and it's gonna be 60 minutes. One thing I wanna stress is this hasn't been confirmed for all levels. We've seen this at the E4 and E5 level. Uh, I'll imagine the same applies for E6, but it hasn't been confirmed. Uh, for interns and new grads, it's not too clear if they will have this AI enabled coding round just yet. In terms of the question format, it's typically one thematic question. It could have multiple parts or multiple stages, which are kind of like checkpoints. So just keep that in mind. You will have a mini code base. The whole idea of this is to see how a developer would work. Oh, the idea of this interview is to mimic reality more, like real life um, developer experiences, software engineering experiences. So you have a mini code base with multiple files, which means you have to navigate a code base in real time. So something you're probably not used to. The old style was more about you writing solutions on algorithm, probably just implementing a single function. Now you're going to be dealing with classes, multiple files, uh, potentially uh, import related issues, depending on your code base of libraries. That probably wouldn't be the main focus, but that could be a case. There's going to be tests. So keep that in mind. You can now run your code. So previously, you couldn't do that. And in the old style round, you had to do a dry run. Now you have to run your code, which means your code running and being correct is more important than ever. Because if you do have an issue, then you'll have to prove that you can debug it. I'll say these are the essentials. Let's talk about the AI models you're going to be using. So right now, and this is obviously subject to change, you have access to three models, GPT-40 Mini, Claude Haiku 3.5, Llama 4 Maverick. These models are obviously different and they'll have their respective strengths and weaknesses. So it'd be a good idea to get familiar with at least one of them, the one you're gonna use. If you have time, get familiar with all three and see which one you prefer. You might decide to stick to one. You might decide to use one model for debugging, one model for writing tests, one model for implementation. You might find that one model suits your prompting style more. So I'm not going to make any prescriptions on which models to use or what strategy. You can go for a single model strategy, a multi-model strategy. I think as more people take these, um, this coding round, we'll find out what works for people more. And maybe I'll share more advice on that. One thing to stress is the models are not reasoning models. So the frontier reasoning models like ChatGPT5 or whatever the latest and greatest from Claude slash Anthropic and the other and Gemini and so on. So these models are more susceptible to hallucinations. I would say definitely don't blindly rely on them. They're still very useful models, but don't blindly rely on it. Definitely review anything they generate. And you also don't always need to use them. There'll be some subtask or activities where it's just better you, you know, go straight for it yourself. Some cases, obviously, boilerplate code generate writing a lot of lines, especially as standard things. Um, it's probably better to offload that to the AI. Let's talk about the question format. So 
debugging existing code, implementing, maybe you might be given an existing interface and you might have to implement it. You might have to write code from scratch. You might have to extend an exist, existing code. So you might have like a code base that's already implemented and you might have to extend it. You might be doing a combination of the above and who knows what else they might introduce, but these are the type of tasks you'd be expected to face. Again, radically different from previous um, style of coding realms where you literally just had to solve an algorithm problem. Well, two in 35 minutes. Um, here you have to contend with an existing code base that was written by someone else. And you have to have a way of quickly understanding what's going on. You're definitely not gonna have to, to review every single file line by line and understand what um, it's doing. That'll consume most of your time. You need to be able to look at an interface the, of the relevant classes, the functions, get an idea of what's going on, know when to dive into a function to know what it's doing and go from there. You might be thinking now, so what's really important? Like, what does it mean to pass? Do I have to have a perfect solution to the problem? I mean, what does this actually care about? What interviews look for is if you can problem solve, you know, how do you break down the problem? How do you take time to understand and clarify the requirements and so on? And obviously your problem solving approach, how you think of different um, options to go and how you decide the optimal approach. Um, can you navigate, you know, the existing code base and complete the required task? Can you verify correctness and debug efficiently, quickly, especially if you're given hints from the failing test and even from the interviewer? How do you communicate your thought process, your decision making, and how do you incorporate feedback, right? These are things they look for. Nothing here says you have to perfectly solve the problem, but obviously solving the problem is going to help. Um, and, you know, demonstrating all these other things will help you uh, a long way. My suspicion is for the first batch of people who take this new round because of the limited resources online, they're probably going to struggle more than people who, you know, do this six months from now. So I'll imagine, yes, it's trickier for the first batch because there's not so much practice, not so much resources, but my suspicion is they'll be, they wouldn't be as harsh now than they will be six months from now. But don't quote me on this. This is just a suspicion. The final thing I want to stress is really what they don't look for. They're not looking to see if you're an expert at prompt engineering. The guidelines they share on this definitely says this. So it's not about how good you are uh, with the AI in the sense of how good you are prompting. It's more about how are you collaborating with the AI assistant to actually solve a problem. They want to see how good of a software developer, or programmer, or coder you are. Let's talk about how you can prepare for this, especially with the limited information, and then we'll go through some FAQs. But before I dive into that, if you think this video is useful, you like the channel, what we do, hit the like button, hit subscribe, share. All right, let's get back to the video. So I've actually prepared a very detailed blog on the Codishing site, codishing.com, on this exact topic. So we have this Meta's AI-enabled coding interview, complete preparation guide. And you can actually have a uh, read through this 15, 20 minutes, you can get through the whole thing. Uh, if I talk about all of this, um, it's going to take the whole video, but there's, I'll just go through the section. So what you need to know, which kind of covered uh, the high leverage moves you can make to help you. The, I haven't talked about pipelining, which is a very uh, important idea that'll make a huge difference how you spend your time. Um, evaluation lenses we've covered. Uh, frameworks you can use for handling the different um, problem types uh, and much more using AI assistant efficiently and so on. So definitely check that out. That would help you. I'll put the link in the description. In summary, you want to get good at writing code from scratch, debugging, extending existing code, doing all three potentially in the same problem whilst communicating with an interviewer who you're going to be interacting with and you know sharing your thoughts with and also obviously leveraging the ai assistant efficiently under the time pressure so this is something we can definitely help you with we can help you with the ai enabled coding round uh, through mocks but also with your other rounds a regular coding round the system design the behavioral um, we have coaches that could help you i'm also one of the coaches so if you want to 
do anything with me, we can definitely help. We offer different packages. You can use the QuickBook button. It all starts from choosing your target companies and it's very straightforward from there. We've had a lot of success with helping people, loads of testimonials, and you can see an overview of some of the services we offer. We have coaching and mock inter um, interviews with a senior Frank Plus engineer, which I just spoke about. But we have diagnostic tests. We have some learning content on our side. On our side, we have advice, of course, of the blogs, uh, an AI mock interview as well, which you can check out. So feel free to explore the site. Okay, let's wrap up this video with some FAQ. So first question, is this just for software engineers? So from what I've seen, software engineers and machine learning engineers have this in their coding round. I have no seen, I haven't seen any evidence of this for data engineers or production engineers, but who knows what's gonna happen in the next couple of months. Is there still a lead code style round? I just wanna be clear, yes, there is. One of the coding rounds has been replaced one of the on-site coding rounds has been replaced with this AI-enabled coding round. Again, going forward in the future, maybe uh, the leak code round would be completely removed, maybe it still stays. We'll see, time will tell. Uh, which level is this for? Interns and grads, are, are they in scope? I can only confirm that I've seen this for E4 and E5, people going for the E4, E5 level. Uh, it's not clear if it will be for E6. I imagine that would be the case, but maybe not because maybe E6's uh, role isn't perhaps um, a lot of the implementation. For interns and new grads, one could argue that they're fairly new to development. Maybe they haven't really worked with real code bases, um, but I suspect it'll be rolled out for interns and grads as well, but this I cannot confirm this. Uh, does the AI have full context or do you have to keep pasting the code files? The AI does have full context to all the files, and in fact, you get a practice code of pad so you can get a feel for an environment before the actual interview. Do you have to use the AI? No, but you probably should, just you don't have to use it 100%. You, you should know when it makes sense to use, when the AI is adding value and when the AI is actually the time sick. If you have any other questions, leave a comment. Otherwise, like, share, subscribe. See you in the next video.